Hi, I'm Josh. We're here to install Snort 3, set up a basic configuration, and run Snort. For this video, we're going to keep things simple and install Snort 3 using a Docker image that we put together. If you'd prefer, you can always install Snort from source by following the instructions in the Snort 3 manual, or by following operating system specific instructions found at snort.org slash documents. If you want to use our Docker image, the only thing you need to install is Docker. Instructions for your specific operating system can be found in Docker's documentation. To actually grab the Snort 3 image, just run docker pull and then the location listed below. We've included a couple of scripts to make things easier. First is start.sh. This script will start a Snort 3 container in such a way that when you exit, the container continues to run. Then, interact.sh is just a quick and easy way to attach to your running Snort 3 container. Everything else in this video will happen inside this container. To exit the container, all you have to type is exit, and to actually stop it, you type docker stop snort3. I'm not going to talk about every one of snort3's dependencies, but some of them are related to exciting new features in snort3 and are worth discussing briefly. The first of these is the requirement for LuaJIT. Lua is a scripting language that's commonly used for configuration purposes or to extend other languages. Snort3's configuration files are written in Lua, and Snort3 will support custom rule options written in Lua. This allows for some really exciting possibilities in the way that Snort rules are written. I'm not going to go too in-depth on this subject, because that'll be covered in some of our rule writing videos. The second big addition I want to talk about briefly is Hyperscan. Hyperscan is an optional dependency, but I highly recommend using it. Hyperscan is a high-performance, multiple regex matching library. When used with Snort 3, it offers vastly greater PCRE processing speeds than vanilla Snort. If you're using our Docker image, it already contains Hyperscan. Now that we've pulled down the Docker image, run start.sh and then interact.sh. Congrats! You now have a running, persistent Snort 3 container. Run the command snort version, and you'll see version information. Now we're going to talk about some basic Snort commands. For ease of use, we went ahead and added the snort3 bin directory to the system path in our Docker image, as well as aliasing snort to point snort at the default configuration file, which is the following command. snort c home snorty snort3 etsy snort snort.lua. This is also the command to verify a snort config. c in this case points to your configuration file. There are a couple different ways to get help from within snort itself. For general help, you can run snort help. For help with a specific module, you can run snort help module. Or you can just not include a module name to get a list of available modules. And you can always get configuration help with snort help config. And to run snort in IDS mode against a PCAP, you can use this command. snort capital R home snorty snort3 etsy snort sample.rules lowercase r, pcap name, capital A, alert test, and lowercase n, 100,000. Capital R points to your rules file, lowercase r points to your pcap, capital A sets the alert type, lowercase n stops after x number of packets. In this case we listed it as 100,000, just in case the pcap we're looking at is huge, so we don't spend forever waiting on Snort to finish its run. Those are your basic commands to get you up and running with Snort 3. Now we put it together a couple of simple labs to show you Snort 3 in action. Now that we have Snort up and running and know some basic commands, let's actually run Snort. In the container, run ls from home snorty. You'll see two directories, examples and Snort 3. Change directory into examples intro and go ahead and run ls. You'll see a few different lab directories. Change directory into lab 1 and you'll see a couple of files run run.sh, and you should see output pretty much immediately. Let's go through this output. First, we have a line that tells us what command the script ran. In this case, snort q talos r get.pcap. We know what snort does, but let's take a look at the rest. First, q enables quiet mode. This just means that we're telling snort not to show us the snort banner or status report. Next we have Talos, which makes use of the Talos tweak and the alert Talos logger. 
This is a quick and easy way to run an inline rule test against a local rules file and using the alert Talos logger for quick and easy to read output. The last option to talk about here is lowercase r, which just tells Snort which PCAP to test against. Now we can take a look at our results. The alert Talos logger splits alerts up based on which PCAP caused the alert. In this case, our local rule alerted. Now that we know what run.sh does, let's run the command by hand. Type in snort q talos r git.pcap. Congratulations. You've now run snort3 against a local rules file and caused an alert. While we're here, let's take a look at the rule that triggered the alert. Run cat local.rules to see the rule in question. This isn't going to be an in-depth discussion on rule writing, just a quick glance at what triggered our alert. If you've written snort2 rules before, you'll notice a couple of differences here. First, our rule has a bunch of white space without any backslashes to escape new lines. You'll also notice that HTTP URI is now a sticky buffer, which means we don't have to list it after every content match that requires it, just before any match that requires it. You can also see the no case oper operator is now placed after a comma after the content match, because it's now an optional part of the content match. This time, we're going to try out running Snort with the official rule set rather than one we've created ourselves. This time, you'll want to go to Examples Intro Lab 2. We don't have a script to run, but that's okay because we know how to run snort from the command line now. Our command this time is just a little bit different. It's going to be snort q talos rule path home snorty snort3 etsy rules lowercase r eternal blue dot pcap. The only new option this time is rule path. This command tells snort where to look for rules files. In this case, we're using the free community rules file, which is already installed in our Docker image. We used a PCAP for MS1710, also known as Eternal Blue, as our example PCAP. And from the output, you can see that Snort3 detects this traffic. It's just that simple. For now, because of the way the Talos logger works, there needs to be a file named local.rules in the same directory, but that file can be empty. As I'm sure you've noticed, Snort3 introduces some changes that break backwards compatibility with Snort2. We realized that would be incredibly inconvenient and didn't want our users to lose their configs or any custom rules that are not a part of the official rule set. So, installing Snort3 also installs a tool called Snort2Lua. This is a very easy to use command line application that will convert Snort2 rules or configurations to the new Snort3 syntax. This time, go to Examples Intro Lab 3, where you'll see a single file named 2.rules. This file is just SID 48904 from the Snort2 community rule set. All you have to do is type Snort2Lua C 2.rules R 3.rules. The first of our options is C. This option specifies the rules or config file that you wish to convert. The second option is R. That option specifies the output file if you're converting a rule. If you were instead converting a config, you would use O. Let's go ahead and take a look at our two rules side by side. As you can see, our original rules file has been converted. We've now covered the basics of installing and using Snort3. This should be enough to get you up and running. If you want more information, check out our other videos covering topics such as rule writing and advanced configuration and SO email us on the Snort users mailing list, or you can take a look at the Snort 3 manual. Thanks for watching.